Hi, it's Dr. McFerrin from DM Explains. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you about LaTeX. LaTeX is a document preparation software. Unlike other word processors where what you see is what you get, like Microsoft Word or others, LaTeX has a structure in which you write everything in plain text, a little bit like writing computer code. Then you have to compile or build that code in order to produce your document. While that seems like a lot of steps, LaTeX is very powerful in dealing with cross-referencing and handling images and handling a number of things that other word processors may struggle with. The other benefit of LaTeX is that it is free. In this video, we're going to get you started with your first few documents and do a little bit of formatting. In further videos in this series, I'm going to be handling a number of other concepts like adding graphics, doing math, adding lists and tables. So you can look forward to those videos coming up. First, I'm going to create a new file by going to File, New. Then the next step that I'm going to take is that I'm going to create a new document by using the command slash. So in LaTeX, most commands start with a slash, slash document class. And you see it will try to autofill here. I'm going to avoid doing that at the moment. And then I'm going to put a squiggly bracket and then type article. And then close squiggly bracket. What that's going to do is it's going to create a document with the class article. The details of that we're going to leave out because this is just sort of a quick start tutorial. But that's all I need to do to be able to start my actual document. So what I'll do is I'll type the command begin. So it's slash begin and then I'll type begin my document. Then anything that I type in after the begin document is what's going to be inside my actual document. So let's just type this is my first document. Uh, this is really a simple example. There's nothing extra, no fluff. Uh, and so that's it, and then all I need to do is type an end document, and I'm very close to having my first LaTeX document. By the way, if you do see an autocomplete, all you have to do is to click the tab button, and it will go ahead and finish that autocomplete for you. So we're really close. All I need to do next is save. So I'm going to save this, um, and I actually have a specific spot. I'd like to go for it, and I'll call this my first document. Okay, so it's now saved as my first document tech. And then I'm going to navigate up to where it says tools, uh, which you may not be able to see on your screen here. And I'm going to click quick build. And then we'll go over and uh, on Mac, the output is displayed uh, in the same window here. On uh, a PC, it may pop to a separate window. What it has done is it's given me a sheet of paper. It's a PDF document. Uh, I'll navigate over and show you it's a PDF. Um, and there's text in there uh, and there's a page number and that's it. That's the whole document. So if I come over here, what happens when I click quick build is it produces a number of files. So there's the .tech file. That's what I actually edit. And then the output that I really care about is this PDF document. So I'll double click that. Uh, this is my first document. You can sort of see it here. The next step is to make this document more complicated, add some other intricacies to it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and go file, save as, and I'm going to call this one my second document. Clear out everything just so that way I don't have to you know, create and save a whole new file. I'm going to give us a little more space so we can see us working. And so here I need to do tell it what type of document it is. So we'll start with slash document class. In this case, I'm going to add some extra parameters. So before I put the squiggly brackets and put article in there, I can put a square bracket instead. And I'm going to put 12 point. That tells me it's going to be 12 point font. And then I'm going to also tell it that it's on letter paper. That's eight and a half by 11 size paper. So I've got 12 point comma letter paper, and then I'll put a square bracket to close that, and then I'll type article. 
this adds document parameters. And so what I'm going to do here is show you if you use the percent sign, it can add comments to your code so you know exactly what it is that you are doing. So I'm adding parameters to the document. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a title. So I'll use slash title and call it second document. I'll give it an author. You could put your name in here. Um, I'm using uh, obviously my name, but you can put your own name in here. You're the author here. And then uh, I'm going to add a date. It is August 2020 at the time of recording this video. And then I will begin my document. So let's go ahead and begin that document. If you let the autocomplete go, what it will do is it will add the end statement for you as well, which is sometimes pretty useful. So the first thing I'm going to do in this document is I'm going to add in a title. And so you have created the title and author and date information in the preamble. The preamble is the part of the document that happens before the actual document, what's going to be typeset. It's where you set all of your parameters. You can add packages, which we'll see in a little bit. But to actually put it into my document, so that way it prints out, I need to do it inside the begin and end document statement. And so to do that, what I do is this. I'm going to do begin title page. So it's going to now add a title page. When I hit enter, it adds the end title page as well. Make sure you have both of those things or this will not work. And then I'm just going to do slash make title. And what that will do for me is it will create this title information on a title page. I want to have another page beyond the title page, so I'm going to go ahead and say this document has a title page. And then I can go ahead and go back to quick build. When I hit quick build, it will auto save. So I don't need to save first. Okay, and if I come over to here and take a look, you can see that what it has produced is something with the title second document with an author, Patches McGillicuddy, the date August 2020, that's on the first title page, and on the second page, it actually has content. One more example, and all I'd like to do is add some extra formatting parameters so we can start making our documents look the way that we might want to. So what I want to do is this. I want to save this as. We'll save as formatting examples. So I did that because I don't want to delete most of this content out of the preamble. In fact, I'm going to leave the preamble exactly as it is. We're not going to do a whole lot more differently as far as we're going to make the title inside the document, but I'm going to delete where this text starts. And then what I want to do is I want to go through how to make section headings, making this content look a little bit nicer. So if I type in section, let's say first section, Let's build and see what that looks like. So a quick build. You can see that it gives me a different font style with a number here for section. In addition to sections, we can do subsections. So I will do subsection. And I'm going to call that subsection the first subsection. I'm not paying careful attention to my capitalization here. But now you see that the font style for this first subsection heading is a little bit different and uh, it gives, it appends a number 0.1 to the section. So it's in section one, subsection one. I can even put text in between so that way you can see what that looks like. So let's put text in between and build. Okay, so you can see that it spaces it out. It puts actual normal text in between the section heading and the subsection heading. If I want to go one step deeper, I can add a sub subsection. And so uh, I'll write sub sub 
section first sub sub section. And when I build that, you'll see I, I've now appended another point one. So I can have a subsection within a big larger section, and then I can have a further subsection within that subsection. So I can organize my information that way. By the way, when I add my next section, so I'll, let, let me show you that. This could be my second section, just to make sure that you can see what's going on here you'll see that it's going to add a second section with a number two. And so every subsection after this second section start point will be 2.1, 2.2, and so on. It auto numbers for you, which is really helpful. Now, maybe your document, it's going to look silly if there are numbers. Usually when I make documents for my courses, I will try to eliminate the number. If I don't want the number to be there, all I have to do is add an asterisk in between the command and the argument. So what I mean by that is I'll show you section asterisk section three no number. Same works for subsections and sub subsections. I'll show you just one so that way you can see it. Subsection it would be 3.1 but with no number. And let's go ahead and build, and here we are. So you can see that the font style is exactly the same as the sections. There's just no number out front. There are a couple more things I want to show you before we end this video. The first thing we're going to do is write a few paragraphs to see what we can do. The first is the new line command. So. The new line command is just slash slash, the same slash as you are using for doing a command is used to do the new line. You just put two of them next to each other. Once I put that new line, if I just keep typing, so with no second carriage return, in other words, if I don't hit enter on my keyboard, here is what it looks like. So. Let's go ahead and build and see what that looks like. The new line command is just going to move me immediately to the next line, but there is no space in between those lines. So uh, typically, as we write paragraphs in a LaTeX document, we try to space them out a little bit more. And so now if I add a carriage return, this is with the carriage return, I can't spell carriage. This is embarrassingly bad. Uh, so with the car carriage return included, it looks like this. Uh, just a reminder, the carriage return is your enter key or return key, depending on whether you have a Mac or PC. Okay, so let's see what that looks like when I build it. So let's see what it did immediately. Well, it gave me a space in between the line that I was writing previously and this line. It also gave me an indent. Sometimes that's desirable, sometimes it is not. I prefer to not use it, so uh, let's add that and then a carriage return. Um, to eliminate the indent, we can use a, a command called no indent. So I'll put it in front, no indent. You can see that I've eliminated that indent. When I type documents, I tend to left align every paragraph. I just have a space in between the paragraphs. That is a matter of style and taste, so it may not be important to you. Now, to get to a new page, we can use the command new page. So let's point out for your benefit that the text backslash starts a command. So if I build that together, you'll see this is now on a new page. You can also see that that's what I have to do to actually type uh, this backslash so that way you can see it in text. Another example of a command is slash latex which 
to do this right, you have a uppercase L, lowercase a, uppercase T, lowercase e, uppercase x. And then when I build it, uh, it's going to stylize LaTeX in the way that uh, it is correctly branded. And that is everything I want to cover in this video. Scan over what we've done. We've got our second document title page. We've got some headings. We've done a little bit of formatting, but this is enough to get you started making your first couple documents in LaTeX. Until next time, thanks for watching.